All right, everybody. So everybody's settled, and it's nice to be have some new members, and we haven't seen each other in so long. We don't know. We should put on a mask. We can identify by eyes. So we're gonna have a brief meeting today, and we're gonna do show and tell. And the sign up sheet is one around, and then we're we're gonna start off by. Thank you, Marlia and Bob, for all the setup. And did you get a chair? So I will start. My first year was in seventh grade art class. It was a wagon train. Because at that time, uh, wagon train was on TV, and Nicole was the scout and was handsome. So that was. My, and I'm Becky, by the way. Sorry, I forgot my name. Well. <laughs> So I'm Becky, and I am the current uh, president looking for a replacement. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I'm so we're going to start out with a real brief business meeting, and we're going to go around with the officers that are here. And I know that last year we talked about the CMA going to continue. You know, we were doing two years or two and a half years of Zoom meetings, and people were getting a little... Hired looking at <laughs> and then we were concerned about um, if we didn't have a full board, if we could still operate as a nonprofit. And Anne did some little research for us and said our office didn't say anything that if we didn't have a full board, we had to stop operating. So the current board has decided that we are going to continue with CMA. Yay! <laughs> and uh, really, you know, we've got a vibrant group and we've got a lot of things going on. And so why stop? But we are going to need volunteers. And um, we're going to talk about the upcoming meetings. Mm -hmm. So elections are coming up and um, got some open positions coming. And I also wanted to let you know that um, Rebecca... I don't know, I know it's Rebecca Slane, but I don't know Grant. Grant. She has graciously agreed to be the creator of our 2023 calendar. Every year we do a calendar. People like to give them as Christmas gifts yep. or whatever. She did a wonderful job. She did. Yeah. She's done it before. She right. Did. So uh, she has agreed to do it. I don't, we don't have any details yet on when she'll need pictures and things like that. So that's wonderful. Uh, real briefly, you know, we have a national jury show coming up that we are sponsoring. And I just wanted to remind any who is who is going to um, still send in things? Let's see. Yay. Okay, good. Great. Because the deadline's coming up June 1st, and 26 people so far have applied. I don't know how many pieces each person has sent in, but that's encouraging. And uh, the judge, Yulia, is uh, going to do a workshop. She's going to be one of the jurors, and she's also doing a workshop. And right now, there's only three spots left for that because she's uh, going to put it a max at um, 12. And right now, nine have signed up. The reception for this show is going to be at the Foothills Art Center, and it's going to be July 29th. And we'll send out an email because we're going to need some volunteers to help with the reception. We don't have to bring food. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, and I think there's wine involved. Oh, oh well, yeah, we have wine too. So, um, <laughs> part of the deal. It's six and they're providing wine. Good. They're providing wine. Hopefully, some food. So, we're right. So, we'll need some people to help set up and keep the table. Um, and fresh. chat up the customers. Chat up the customers and then, you know. So, we'll send out some information on that soon. So that's all I have to say today. So let's see. Okay. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the Lafayette Library Show. Thanks for making that up. Uh, it was a big success. 15 of our members all put in artwork for it. And uh, the theme, of course, was travel. Pam Ferris gave a wonderful photo exhibit talk, which accompanied the show. And that's part of our mission, which is to educate the public on the say She did a great job on that. Um, the, uh, the curator told me that they received many compliments on the show. And they, she also said they never, ever had any sales, but we had two sales. 
So our very own Pam. Yay! So that's hers. Um, uh, which was and Nan. Egypt Emerging and Nan sold yeah. Moroccan Doors. So oh, congratulations, Moroccan Doors. That's a nice one. Yeah. So uh, we have another show scheduled uh, in 2022. That's our CMA group. That's at the Pace Center Gallery at Parker Arts uh, in Parker, Colorado. And the theme is abstraction out of the box. It's similar to the national uh, show's theme in that we're looking, they really want to see mosaics in unexpected ways. So it can be abstract, but it can be concrete as well. Any, any subject, just unexpected ways. And if you do happen to apply for the National Show not be accepted, certainly apply for the uh, Pace Center Gallery Show. Oh, when is it? Uh, the dates for that submission is September 1st. Delivery has to be by September 28th. The show will run uh, in October through mid-November. And they are going to host a very large reception for us at this. Uh, it's a beautiful gallery that, you know, it's been many years since we were able to get in. So I feel like this is a real accomplishment we're getting in. I encourage everybody to submit pieces for it. I think it'd even be fun. Maybe we, we all go for opening night. Maybe got some of us stay overnight there. <laughs> have, a, have a party and have breakfast. Last time, last time I reception, they had live musicians. They, they said they're really going to do a big job of the reception. And they're lining it up with uh, First Friday, which uh, Parker is starting to make a big deal. And so there'll be a lot of advertising for it. And, and Betsy did write all of this down and send it to me. So we will have it in your notes. I, oh, good. Without yeah, having yeah. to, like, remember. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Betsy, how many do you think each person can put in? Uh, I, I'm glad you got there. I was just coming to the toilets. So... Uh, notes I made for myself, they're looking for contemporary artwork, modern interpretations of mosaic, can be abstract or representational, looking for unusual interpretations, unexpected results, works can be curated by one of our former CMA members, Judy Pendleton, thank you for getting that set up. The total number of pieces will be 50, there will be 3D pedestals uh, that will be there, there will be six of those wall space, glass cabinets. And uh, I'm thinking right now, limit about three pieces per person, uh, but please send them in. Because I, again, this is gonna be a gorgeous gallery. Yeah. So I really mm -hmm. want that. They will be taking a 20% commission, which is very, very well. Mm -hmm. And then I also have booked our first show that's booked in 2023 is at the Belmar Lab, uh, Library. Lakewood, Colorado. They have just remodeled their whole library. They have an art wall dedicated to art for the public. They're not taking any percentage of the sales that will go to the library. The theme is going to be in October 2023, and the theme is going to be small scale mosaic. So it's going to be limited to 12 by 12 or smaller. So it should be a fun challenge. Betsy, um, yes. how do we sign up for you? You, you I can't say her name. Uh, uh, like workshops. You, you yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Foothills <laughs> Art Center is taking the, the yeah. uh, re registrations for it. Which art center? Foothills Art Foothills, Center. Foothills, yeah, They're the ones Golden. that are doing Golden. the show. Right. They, they, have, they have room. That, does the craft room beautiful? Yeah. So they have a whole thing. Okay. Okay. So you got to sign up for them. Okay. <laughs> is it 400? It's two, two days, nine in the morning until four in the afternoon, Saturday and Sunday, and $400. $400. And what she does is she does glass on glass. That's her thing. And she does it all with hand tools. No grinders, no saws, nothing. So she's it's really amazing. amazing. Yeah. Okay, so Karen, do you want to do the treasure? Yes. Um, currently we have 39 members and we have, I forgot my kid rose at home, we have about $6,337 in the bank. Um, I wanted to share with you the, some of the, uh, the expenses for the Foothills show. 
We have a tentative uh, estimated budget. We anticipate income of $909,050. This will come from entry fees, sales of the catalog, and uh, sponsorships. We have already received over um, $1,500 in donations for that. If anybody feels generous, wants to put a little donation in, you're welcome to do that. We have the library is here. I took over the library and I brought it. So over on the table by the driveway, uh, the two scholastic uh, books, uh, boxes is our library. There's a little uh, folder in there. All you have to do is find the title, sign your name, and the date you took it out. You can keep it for as long as you like. Uh, we won't get back together in this group until July. So, uh, but do 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 take advantage of our library. It currently weighs eighty pounds. Oh. <laughs> I, I have a, I have a fractured spine, oh. and I really don't want to carry eighty pounds home. Everybody so, needs to check out. Everybody, please yeah. check out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Our and next meeting is in June. We're going to oh. meet at Lori's uh, husband's business, and we're going to oh, do okay. a, okay. a well, little rodeo. I'll bring it there as well. Then. Okay. Hopefully, you want um, to bring it off. <laughs> I also wanted to put out a plug for Amazon Smile. Uh, if you order on Amazon, please order from Amazon Smile because we are one of the charities listed in their list. And a portion of your sale, your purchase, will go back to us free money. So I, I encourage you all to do that. Um, this, that's it. We have for the workshop today. We only have seven people that have paid me. I think you all know who you are. If you have to bring the five dollars, <laughs> I have changed. <laughs> so, Kathy, you want to talk about your handout? Sure. Yeah. 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 We have been, actually, I was contacted by two different groups simultaneously. Have you thought about doing any sort of feeling through mosaics for the fire oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So I like to follow those nudges and said, sure, we'll do something. Let me ask the board because I don't have time to, to do it. But um, we came up with this plan. Rather than doing something big as an installation, being on hand for two days so people can do just a small five by seven big piece. We will have you, our member artists, on hand for just as much or as little time as you can spare in the two days. We'll be using thin set. I know in the past we did a proxy scope one time, thin set is. 10 times cheaper, um, and we can mix it up in baggies, and it'll give a longer working time. And But to create a work surface that people can press their items, their memorabilia into, uh, any small items that you have that you could donate to the project, any little alphabet letters or, or beads or small tiles, because again, it's, it's working pretty small. Um, Good, good. And so um, it's happening, well, you can read. It's, here's, the, here's the dates and times. Uh, Christ the Servant Lutheran Church was one of the groups that approached me, and they're willing to host us, and they're willing to provide food, but we're going to wait and see in August what COVID looks like. They, they will have a table greeting people, so we don't even have to do that when people walk in the building. They'll welcome them. The workshop's over there. The restrooms are over there. And they're also going to have a sign. We discussed this as a board. Very non-threatening. If you need somebody to talk to about the loss that you've experienced from the fire, you can you know, let one of them know, and, and they'd be happy to do that. So I did create a Google form, which I emailed to all of you. Uh, so anybody who finds out about us, emails us, can sign up on there just so we can kind of keep track of who's interested. And if you can use that form on your availability and when you think you might might want to come help, because I know a lot of people work and some of us don't, uh, that will help us as we get closer. I'm afraid August is going to be here really fast. So there two other events going on that want to cross-promote our event. 
One is through the Louisville Historical Museum. And I'll include that in the notes just, just so you know what's going on. They're doing um, preserving your memories workshops for people too. There's um, a contemporary art exhibition going on through the Marshall Fire community. And they're looking for people to propose art projects, which I don't quite understand. Why do you have to propose it? Why don't you just enter it? But it's their show. So um, there's a lot of energy behind this. And I think it's, I don't know if anybody's driven through there lately. Louisville Historical Museum has <laughs> invited us to be their first Friday, August 5th topic. So if anybody interested in talking about the Healing from the Ashes project, maybe even doing a little demo with the board and sticking some stuff in. It's during the first Friday art walk, um, 6 to 8 p.m. Main Street, Louisville, and I can include that. I won't be here. So. <laughs> we'll send a private plane. <laughs> I'll be unpacking. <laughs> so think about it. I will include that in the minutes, but you know, it'd just be a really fun way to, to talk to some of the locals and um, explain kind of what we're doing and stick some stuff in. So, thanks, Betsy. Okay, my, my partner in crime co-secretary. <laughs> <laughs> it's not her fault. And all of you know, I send out emails at like four or five in the morning. Yes. It's better than thinking about Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so um, as Karen said, we have 39 members. Uh, and this is the rest of what's happening in just a few minutes. On June 12th, we'll have the equipment, tools, and more rodeo at uh, my husband's office, which is Vista Sales. It's in Golden. We were going to go up towards um, Heritage Square, where it used to be. It's right in that area. Um, and there is a ramp, so you can get in and out easy enough. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> July 12th, Christmas in July, in person at Karen's Clubhouse. Um, our land is co hosting, and we're going to have a mosaic gift exchange and pop up. Oh, man, bring stuff that you want. <laughs> The Austin Mosaic Group presented by Judy Spoken. Is that right? Okay, virtual. Virtual, yes. Unless we all want to go to Austin. September 11th, in person. Um, and we have an invitation to Melina Porter. Is she, is she a yes? Yes. Sure. She's a yes. Um, and she's a metal artist and jeweler. So that could be really fun way to incorporate kind of like She's gonna teach us how to use colored pencil on copper. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> when was that? Um, September, September 11th. 11th. October 9th is a virtual meeting with the Austin Mosaic Group. Art Not speaker, Dr. Rivera and Martha Russo will be. November 13th are our elections. We need a president or a co president, PR and marketing, and re elect Bob, it says here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's start. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and somebody for programming. And then December 10th is our in person Saturday holiday luncheon, and we're still going to have to determine where the location will be. Anyone wants to volunteer? Let us know. And Betsy has graciously agreed to extend her term for one more year as VP. Yay! Yay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for the board members or anything? One twice. One twice. Done. So right now, I break because I can. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we have had co-presidents in the past. For those of you who are newer or aren't familiar with that. The board is just a bunch of us volunteers, and you know you don't have to do it alone. So stepping up and, and filling in a slot and talking to other people, how we kind of make some plans, is really not as hard as it sounds. 
or these people wouldn't let us rope them into doing it again. <laughs> so so do, do think about it. Um, I'd say half the people here have served at some point. So. And you served many times. Many of us have served many, many times. times. <laughs> and there's room for more. To, so thank you. Oh, thank you. I like to say, being president, it's 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 been work, but it has been interesting work. I've gotten to know people on a much uh, better basis, and it's been fun. You know, sometimes you're frustrated that somebody has a complaint about something, and you're like. Well, I got it, but you know, you get you deal with it, you get over it, and it's it's really been rewarding. I've I've enjoyed it, and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so uh, you need someone to uh, step up and take these positions. So we will it's greatly appreciate you. Are they all two years? Yes. I want you to get roped in there. <laughs> 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 you can do longer if you want. Yeah. Like what? So now we're going to start our show and tell. And Jean, you're up first. Where, oh. do, you, where do you think we should do it? Of course, this one runs somewhere around five pounds. And it's made on this foam insulation board. And I let AccuPro, which is the same thing they use on the underneath shower stalls. So it is waterproof. I've had one outside that has been out there for a year and has survived. And it, my husband stood on it and we're hold up to <laughs> So it has worked out really well. And it's really the practice the biggest part with the mosaic and doesn't take long at all. And then I'm experimenting using cloth or material because there's so many different designs. I use the wire in the back and use um, what do you call it, mod pod and uh, just take it down on there and then I do a spin set on the back and put it on whatever surface. The only thing I have with a hot Colorado Sun, it, it will fake, but I'm still working on that for us. It's kind of challenging. But if you want to feel how light this is, you can just pass it around. It's not like really grout it. What do you think? I did grout it. And I attached each, each piece of this is attached to an inset. And this is sort of a chaco grout. And then I put several layers of a. Uh, and then I did one more, it turned out to be a little bit more of a challenge for me. It's actually turned out to be a one of those uh, medallions that you use on the ceiling for lights. I don't know what to do. Anyway, it was a challenge to do. Uh, there's so many bumps and crevices in there trying to put your test ray on. I use inset again because I have a hard time. I have to have something that grabs on. Nothing like well bond, but no more of that. And it's 24 inches in diameter. I'm still having a hard time trying to name it. Because sometimes it looks like water, sometimes it looks like a lava flow, or sometimes whatever. So I don't know, and I don't know if any one of these will be able to be qualified for the show because it just really doesn't have a frame. Oh, yeah. I don't think it has to have a frame. No, no, it's finished. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it was fun to do but very well. So, so, this is a entry to the National Street Show, which is Mosaic to the New Eyes. And I wanted an industrial kind of rundown, decayed look of it. So, this is um, 24 gauge stainless steel. And the gentleman who made me the frame also made the highway for me. I drive downtown every day, so I see a lot of infrastructure. So I used um, small toe to represent the building. <laughs> and this is an old garden hose oh, nozzle to keep the smoke stack. And then I used um, office supplies that I took apart and I rusted. 
Some of these things must have really fast, let me tell you. <laughs> so uh, it's to represent, you know, what infrastructure looks like down below. It's just decaying and everything. And then I tried to put in some of the I really didn't want to do that. But just the graffiti that you see on building up and like that. So that is it's just rub on letters. Oh, wow. so, these are uh, the prong fasteners that you see in the binders. These are the top of the binder cushions. I broke them apart. I have some rusty screws, rusty insulation wire, um, some cut off rusty nails. And then the safer question then is this. Um, Picture frame wire that I pulled up to be the fence. What did you make stuff rusty with? Did you just use vinegar or what? Water. Just water. water. And it happens that quick? Some of it was two days. Oh, oh my God. Some of it was, yeah, so we have file folders with those wrong fasteners and put it <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I fastened these four um, screws using some of the equipment that I got. And then um, you can see, if they kind of moved on the bottom, I would better use two screws. And then I switched the uh, man who made the frame gave me this covering for the wow. people grabbing it to cut their hands. It's not sharp. And then I have the wire on it. Two holes here for the, the framing wire to go on. So that's it. It's wow. I'm my neighbor. I like them. Oh, cool. But they're really hard to find. But they're fun. They're really That would fit in the 12 by 12 show. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So it's I take everything out and then go around it. So and I make sure it's Yeah. Can yeah. yeah. you pass that yeah. around yeah. so we can see? I would have never looked at that and thought I could look at a lot of crap and think I'd mosaic. Yeah. That ain't what that is. I would never <laughs> thought. I'm just I did a coast ball. And I'm gorgeous. That you know, I was going to give a class on cleaning and then I, I ended up with cold really bad, and then my mother got very bad. And this is just mother of pearl tiles. Well, yeah, yeah, the animals are buffalo horns. The you know sunset, Colorado sunset, mm -hmm. the colors of the map, and uh, I I just wanted to this I got the um, the glass at the uh, the court. Uh, Northern Colorado State Press mm -hmm. supply store, and we went, we had a field trip, <laughs> and it was so much fun. And so, this is the glass that I used every that I got that day. And uh, oh, so, I it just kind of makes me uh, remember our trip. <laughs> so fun. And, um, yeah, I just like, I like so it's expensive. <laughs> no, it's on a, it's like a weed board. It's called the, uh, oh, what's that? Go uh, board. board. Go board. Yes, go board. Yeah, I found a spot uh, in Northern Colorado that sells it because I, I didn't know where to get it. I found a place in uh, Loveland. And, uh, yeah. So, and can you tell us what tools did you use? I just used uh, regular uh, glass cutting. Oh, so you hand cut that. Yeah, everything's hand cut. You're you so talented. Have it in the frame when you work on it? No. I had to put the frame in afterwards, and uh, I I got the frame from uh, Frame Destinations. Oh, that's where they come. I gave yeah. I gave them my dimensions, and I think uh -huh. I, I was like fudged it a little bit because it's a little short, so I had to kind of center it. <laughs> I'm not really good. At, I'm not a handyman when it comes to the frame, but um, yeah, that's what you I. You just left a quarter inch lip on the way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Of it. So is that grouted? Yeah, with um, a gray. Great grout. Nice. Really nice. Yeah. Really beautiful. Yeah. Really yeah. yeah. Sets off the mountain. Yeah. The gray route. Sets off the mountain. Yeah. Thank you. And I, my idea was kind of to various necklaces around. Mm. I, after I got it done and was kind of cleaning off the grout, I have 
kind of a place here where I missed crowding. Um, and then there were another along here. I put trout on top of the dry trout. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is such a necklace that you can wear. It, it's screwed to the back right now. I do that for security. But um, all of the all of the beads on here and the caps are from my jewelry line. And I have just a thousand of them. So I'll be happy. English. And how do you glue the beads down? <laughs> it's a glue from Michael's, the glass, and I don't remember the name of it. Okay, but it worked fine. Um, yeah. Sorry. But it's, <laughs> a, right. it's a glass on glass. Yes. 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 Tired. So lots of things going on. So oh, I just did a few glass oh from Beautiful. the Apex Center. If you guys have done fused glass, and my my uh. Appetizers here are in a fused glass that I, class that I had taken another time. Oh, so it's not mosaic, but it is mosaic. It is a uh, fused glass. So oh, it's beautiful. Really fused. Yeah. So, yeah. And then this is from the Apex Center. I live in our bedroom. So. Wow. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> this is one that I'm trying to finish. Um, I've got a piece of Ouija board. Um, and the original plan was I have, you can put our parts in the folder. I'll need a whole bunch of picture frame corners. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool? Oh, oh wow. wow. Very nice. I don't like it when I get that. <laughs> 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 I was trying to make oh, it like it's an awesome. Asian looking doorway. Yeah, it looks that way. Uh-huh. Well, you know, so this was also going to be my hanging system. So currently, I don't have a hanging system. Boy. Oh, oh my god! Why, why don't you like it? What don't you like I think. It? Well, I knew it was gaudy frame. I mean, that's right. a given. Um, but I thought it was just more like <laughs> looking. Yeah, I, know, I, like, so. I just I think so if you could find something with equal weight. Put and all the line to the other direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, yeah. yes, I stairs up the street. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Like stairs. Yeah. yeah. Little yeah. stairs up. Because the Asian architecture, yeah. they have stairs. Right. Right. And then I was like, then I actually, when I made it, I'm like, this looks more Mongolian than like regular. Yeah. I'm going through lots of cultures. It looks Persian to me. So. So I ended up like I got mad. Um, I was just like <laughs> added this like little wood roof to it, but um, onto it. All I did for the edges is use Loctite. I don't I don't use mesh um, kind of thing. I just use Loctite, put them on there, grabbed it, works just fine. So this was the top of uh, the CD deck, and this is supposed to be bamboo. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> How is that a back to a CD rack? Oh, how did the house? Yeah, yeah. But, but how? Okay. Can you explain that? Oh, I don't know. It's the origin story we want. It's the press. And I was concerned when I made this because this was an inch, this was a piece of glass that I had for like 15 years and it's really, um, it's really warpy, and I was really worried about grout bleed, and I had to cut it into a lot more pieces than I wanted to cut it in. But Betsy came over and gave me the courage to use translucent grout with it. Oh. Um, and it really wasn't bad. We follow, um, do you know a guy named Peter that's on the Mosaic Mentoring yeah. case? Yeah. With the we wonderful Australian his, accent. We Peter um, yeah. I watched it a few times beforehand. I even made a little minimal piece that I brought along somewhere. Um, I would only use translucent grout if uh, I would use it with like tessere, I like like tile. I wouldn't use it with like china. But if if you've got some glass, like this glass is less transparent than this glass. Mm -hmm. But the more transparent it is, the more it reflects the color. So, mm -hmm. so that's really fun to do. And I have a uh, frame from Frank Destination. Uh, Floating for in my And which one yeah. Okay, show and tell. <laughs> yeah, this is the only screen you will uh, see, see him here. Okay. 
Oh, that's your chance. Wow. So I, um, this is, I'm used to working on small pieces. <laughs> and this was my first uh, kind of challenge thing for myself, my first public art piece. So this is uh, about four feet by four feet by four feet. And uh, it's, it's completely covered in a glass tile. And some of the people you can see, like the the butterflies, or if you look closer, there's there's dragonflies or bees or different things, or the letters that are on there. I handmade those out of epoxy sculpt uh, and then painted those. And I uh, learned by trial and error that uh, when you growled over painted things, it scratches up the paint and you have to repaint it. <laughs> Uh, so uh, each of them that's painted uh, is now coated uh, resin and, and then dried. Uh, and uh, we, let's say, probably about 250 pounds. Wow. I had a hydraulic table for lifting yeah. it up and down to kind of help on the back. And uh, I got a whole bunch of, of young friends to come over and help when it came time to delivering it over to uh, Lafayette. Um, What's the substrate? Thank you. Okay. So it's a it's a dense encapsulated styrofoam. And I found out that there's only three manufacturers of it in Colorado. And you can only buy $500 or, or more you know, quantities of it. They don't do small shipments. So I did a road trip out to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and somebody had passed away. It happened that their father passed away yeah. and had a ton of it. And so I thought we yeah. filled the truck mm -hmm. oh my God. as much as we could, drove back. So over. it's just pieces. Mm -hmm. it's, it like is, it's, it's like pieced together and then carved out and then cement and mesh, three different layers. Oh my God. Uh, and the, the cement is made. I followed Sherry Warner. Mm. Uh, methodology and in fact I set up consulting sessions with her and all and she was the one that said you cannot sculpt uh, cement in the winter time oh. outside oh. right it, oh. it sure. won't, it, yeah I, I should have thought of that but I didn't so this was made in my sunroom <laughs> and <laughs> it took over the, the dining room sunroom area for the four months uh, once, once it had the three layers of mesh wired on and it had the three layers of cement, then it all had to be sanded down so that it got everything as flush as it could be so the tiles would stay on flush. So you made the chair to yes. be yeah. out of pieces. Yes. Oh, amazing. Yes. Very mm -hmm. nice. Um, and the other thing, which you can see with the legs sticking out, is that... Um, I had to hire a welder to make, uh, to weld a steel bracket that's a part of the internal frame and that comes out. And so there are flanges that come on four different points, two in the front, two in the back, so that they could be bolted down. And that was a requirement that the city had. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to right. fit on the pad. Mm -hmm. Even though it's 250 pounds, probably not going to go anywhere. <laughs> you know, but. A couple boys that's a, that and it's a challenge. Carry it there. I, I, that's true. That's true. And my husband is a worry wart. And uh, he just saw this as a living nightmare. <laughs> and he was petrified that his teenage boys might come oh, and, sit in it. you know, or try to skateboard off and injure themselves <laughs> to us. And so we ended up having to get insurance on uh, and get oh, a liability oh policy. And not a requirement of the city. Oh, to your my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would say uh, Zinc is uh, the company that I went through, and they don't care if you're getting $100 of liability insurance or a million. It's the same. So it's got a million dollars. Oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. And it's, you know, it ended up costing $600. For oh, the God. Um, so it's in your front yard. 
No. <laughs> uh, so this is in the basement, and it is two in images. The one that's on the white table, it's a, it's a mirror that goes in our living room. And the hardest part about doing the whole project was getting it from the basement to the upstairs. <laughs> And so I had my big boys help us, and <laughs> and, and so we we hung it up there. And then uh, there's also a, a trim of of a tile that goes around it oh, to match the, um, the the new mm -hmm. um, fireplace that's uh -huh. uh, to the right. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It was really fun. It was really, really she couldn't fun. bring it here. <laughs> Why didn't you bring it? <laughs> Yeah, it's about seven by five. Wow. Yeah. You know, you can have a close up. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to see what it looks like close up. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, maybe. And okay. if you go on the right hand side, it's just a bunch of strips of different glass that I have. Uh -huh. And that's my my kind of workshop down there. Um, so you can tell you yeah. About that. It's kind of a cool workshop, but um, I just took um, half in slices of different shades of tile and I, I wanted to do in blues and greens. So oh, colors of blues. And then I had a whole bunch of, of uh, dragon eyes. So uh, then I thought, okay, that'll give us some nice texture. Mm -hmm. But it, it was really fun yeah, to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fur came off of the bathroom in the, <laughs> in the, in the, uh, the guest bathroom downstairs. Because I wanted to paint a mural on the wall, I didn't want a mirror there. Okay. So I mean, can you imagine that space of mirror every time you go in there and go, "Oh God!" <laughs> <laughs> so I painted a mural there, and then I wanted to put the glass there because we have a slider on the other side, so it just makes the room look a little bit bigger. Uh -huh. Yeah, Jane sent this in, but she's not online. But basically, kind of read along. She uh, has done this kind of project before here she decided that the whole bottom was wrong and so she got rid of the like it says in here scraped off everything on, on below the red line and finished it like that wow so it's she ends up radically different than look at that was and here is something we've seen in, in person yeah so my biggest challenge was getting uh the slate pieces Oh, um, well, getting the mesh off the slate pieces. Yeah, that was the, yeah, that was a real pain. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty. And everything else, I just love color, so I just oh, put yeah. whatever I had. It just looks like candies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nummy. Yeah, and then I resined it all. Yeah, so what's, what's, what so size cool. is that? I can't see the size. Oh, eleven by twenty. Eleven by twenty. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, if people send stuff in, on, uh, I just copied their email and cleaned it up a little bit and put it on the put the text on. This is all Marlia's stuff. Yeah, there's three of them. Uh, two are finished, and the other one's, you know, in the drawing state. Here's the two. Um, I took the pictures, so they're not great. They're reflections. All hey. of them. Um, I'm I'm looking for um, oh. pictures. Um, I'm back to the 50s and the early 60s uh, and sci-fi and nice. primary colors yeah. and shiny really and and for some reason zeppelins. <laughs> zeppelin, yeah. man, I wish there was a zeppelin somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> there was one picture. blew up. <laughs> anyway, that's that's what's going on. Though. And it's right cool. down the hall. And please visit my studio. It's just right. And we tried at first to send out press releases to all the newspapers. Well, nobody reads newspapers, and they don't really even have an art department anymore so but our so uh, the, the lady in the picture sonia Ellingbo, has known Marlia since we moved here 30 some 40 yeah. years some years ago and so she has uh, uh once again she slipped in a little box that is the essence of, of my speech nice. but the most important thing was i decided to go online like many of you have yeah. and find out how many mosaic groups there are in this country and there are tons of them uh, the ones on the right, this is, uh, I, I basically became a member of all of these groups, and some of them required uh, filling out forms and answering questions and sounding like I knew what I was talking about. And once they had approved me, then I could put up some kind of a thing. And 
what I did was here's what I posted this this JPEG image that is I could quickly paste it up. It shows the logo. It, the spiel is makes money in effect because they're talking about twenty five hundred dollars in cash prizes, and then it included a. Uh, the uh, it came along with the, with a statement that had a clickable uh, uh, line at the bottom that you could click and went straight to the cafe entry form. Assuming you know how to use cafe, you could put your stuff in and start the form and finish it up. But that's what I did for the last month or so, trying to get things done. And and uh, we th it, it would be interesting to find out when we get done, because when I started, there were only about. 10 or 15, you know, in 9, 10, 15 entries. And we have now 26. Yeah, we've roughly doubled that. Yeah. And now it may just be that people, everybody waiting, waiting around to put in their entries. But I'd like to think that these groups that are in the listing here, some of them are serious. Uh, they are like professionals. But some of these mosaic sites are considerably better than anything we put online. I mean, they're not, they're not fooling around. Some are arts groups that are, uh, but you can tell by the titles that, uh, did, that they're, some of them are specialized in, in equipment and te techniques. There's uh, critiques and tutorials was one of the last ones that came through with an approval on my membership. And, and uh, th these people, I'm thinking out of this 25 some groups, there have to be at least a handful of people who like you guys have done the work but don't know where to show it off and have never had a reason to try, well, go for the prize. If nothing else, you get exposure in Colorado and, and a reason to come here. But that's, that's basically, that's my show and tell. What, what I've done for about a month playing around in my computer upstairs. We should ask people that get in the show how they heard about the show. Well, exactly. And, and right now, as you mentioned, the, the, because the uh, analysis of the decisions of the judges which is uh, Yulia and uh, yeah. Eric out at uh, Foothills. Those people are the only ones who are seeing the, uh, the entries and CAFE is, does not reveal who these people are. So your stuff is gonna be thrown in with all this other stuff. Whoever else put in, there may, you may, there's some whiz bang stuff maybe in there. Maybe somebody is really good at by four inch super micro mosaics. Whatever it is, it's all different than the norm. Yeah, and that's the appeal for this particular competition. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see when it gets all done, where the, where the winning entries come from, because they may not be anywhere around here. That's what we were hoping for. That's well, we except for you'd like to have one that got in. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's the deal. You get three, like it says here, if you haven't entered two or three mosaics, why not? Give it a shot. Yeah. The you know it's it it just flat flat price one price one one entry or three right. so okay let's get workshop okay. all right what do you mean all right well I'll give the disclaimers first I'm no pro at this I I, I research enough online to be dangerous and I just start playing so. You know, you're going to want to, you know, if you wanted to live outside in hot and cold weather, you might want to do a little research as to how you might finish complete things. But this is kind of what I find to be the most popular, most typical style online when, when people are doing gazing balls or chairs or, or anything sculptural like that. And if you want to get the pros information like Betsy did, Sherry Warner Hunter's book is a great place to then jump into that next realm. I've just started really tearing into it, but books aren't really my thing. So <laughs> I'm struggling with it. it. If that was in video form, I'd have watched it 10 times by now, but the, the book, I, I'm, I'm trying to work towards it. So for first, uh, First step in this process is we've got the ball on our dirty cup that's just you know, used in set mixing cups. So we're gonna have to wrap it in the, the mesh. Always you want alkali resistant mesh or it will break down over time. That's a very important part of the equation. So always, because they'll look exactly the same. You'll, you might even get tricked. Ooh, that one's $2 cheaper. Don't do it. It's not the one you want. Alkaline resistance. Uh, where do you get it? Uh, you can get it at Home Depot, 
Lowe's, you know, probably online, but you know, it's a it's like a drywall tape, you know, for, you kind of put drywall together with it, then you have putty in it and it, it seams everything together. So alkali resistant is for certain products. So you always want that. So basically to get around the six inch ball, what I do is I kind of do a basketball wrap. I wrap full around, then I, you know, go perpendicular to us. I'll kind of walk you through that. You know, my words, that doesn't always make sense into someone else's brain. If anything is unclear, let me know. I tend to talk in circles and sometimes never make my point. Sometimes I make my point beautifully. I don't always know. So don't, don't hesitate to stop, ask questions, and, and we'll just kind of go at it, you know, slowly here. So basically what we're looking for is you probably want about nine to 10, 19 inch strips. So if you want this to just kind of compare it to, or, or I've got my, my tape measure here, but you're just gonna want about nine of the same, same length. Yeah, but it was totally different. It's really thick. Oh. You have to use wire. wire. Oh. Totally out. The weirdest thing I've ever had. So I think I read it your bio. You're like so Fred, well, I used I bought when I bought this tape, I kept the roll and I found that it didn't stick. It sticks to some things better than others. One side is sticky, one side isn't. And it can be a little tricky to figure out exactly which is the sticky side unless you really know. I mean, in the roll, the sticky side is down. But once you get it out, it's not the stickiest thing. And it takes a little finesse to kind of pet it on there and, and keep it sticking. So you wrap the entire box of the Absolutely. I do, yeah. I think that's easier once things just start getting messy. You're not going to want to touch it again. It'll stick to the styrofoam. I think it will. Like for this one, I made this out of garbage. I, I just took some old thin set bags and some random garbage. I wrapped it in one layer of aluminum foil mesh and, and started doing the same process. It didn't stick to the aluminum very well. That took a little extra finessing. So it sticks to the styrofoam a little better. What was the point of the aluminum foil? Uh, just to kind of give it a package. Package it because I have little Ziploc bags, you know, kind of crammed yeah. together and just some uh, paper towels that I've used to wipe up things. I just ran them trash out of my room. I kind of, so the tin foil cinched it all together and then I could deal with it. So it wasn't really vital. It was just the solid surface on what? Right, right. And, you know, because I learned that doing that Paltaya demonstration, they use Paltaya uses the aluminum foil as their substrate, essentially. All right, here. Somebody want to catch this? You want to? I'm going to throw it to you. Okay. And you can start cutting some and pass it on down. Okay. Oh, then I'll start Yeah, it's not super exact. I should tell you. Okay. It's all right. Oh, we, we start really approximating. Yeah, uh, it's not exact. It's not yeah. so <laughs> it's not. And, and it won't need to be. You'll find that stuff starts overlapping. Oh, so yeah. keep one of these. So that's for oh, okay. Does somebody else? We're going to have these flying all over. Do you need one? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'll pass them down. Of nine. Okay, I'm going to pass them down. No, you just kind of pass it down, I would think. Okay. Just so everyone gets used that's to dealing with it. Oh, let's do another one. Let's do one more. I just handed that set down. Sometimes you end up with this crap on the side of the roll. Like sometimes the little mesh things don't 
fully released. So. Yeah, I knew this mesh was going to be the hardest, most time consuming part. But with stickiness, I didn't want to have it all pre either. And it's good to feel what it's like. I think so too. That's a ribbon line, so that's about the ones that we are done. Guys, we're ready to pass it on. Next post. No. There's one. Yeah, that's an extra. I know our mom. I'm just going to take it home. Okay. I'm going to have a deal. Okay. Great. Do you need something? It wouldn't hurt to just know what the part of the show is. So, Grant, you have to get the next one. That's the downside of this method. But any method. You have is going to have overlap kind of in one area. I've seen people just do little squares and patch all over it. But that seems like a nightmare to me. Because they're each going to move as you're wanting to patch the way your thin set on. So what you could do is you kind of splotch on some thin set, splotch on your your patch, and work that way. But then you're you're I back and was, forth with dirty and, and messy. I, but I, I've done it that way with the Brazilian okay. triangles. Like, right. And then inset mixed up and you're doing it at the same time. And then the whole water. Right. It's, this is less messy. Yeah, I, I find it. You can always take a file to it later. And if you've got a bulbous side, file it down. Because you've got several layers of mesh and thin set, so you've got the extra. Right, right, yeah. If you want to get cut at your corners there, right, right. Yeah, as they curve around, right. That was so helpful. I saw that on YouTube, it's not mine. But it was really helpful because a lot of the the um the seams ended up being a lot heavier, you know. Right. And it was harder to get the tessellated. And like you know, for Betsy's chair, she wanted that real flat. But this ball, this is fine. It can be all chunky and rough like that because I'm just gonna slather thin set on there for my tessera anyway. Yeah. Right. But I've even, you know, I'd almost like some calipers. I've kind of turned my ball on my thing, make sure everything's perfectly round. And... Does anyone else need? Oh, I thought so. Oh, I have here you want some scissors i got scissors oh Final product is what we grade oh, on. Wow. Right. You should have every spot covered, every spot of the styrofoam covered, just because you want that rigid strength. That's what's going to give it, it its strength. 
Does anybody need more mesh? I've got more here. When you have yeah. mesh on your on ball, your ball let's just get, get, get yourself, yourself some thin sets. Set. So you'll need a scoop, maybe two scoops of thin set. Don't forget your mask. Yeah, wear a mask to scoop thin set. Thin set was out in the driveway there. Yes, it is still. And do we have water around? We should. We should have water. We need a little water. Yeah. Yeah, you want to mix in the clean one. I don't think it matters as long as we all stock our cupboard. So you would consider putting all this in one box. So I eventually as you get better with it, I think you will want to do that. But I think it, you know, that that's a physics lesson beyond the <laughs> Does anybody need a mask? You bring the worst. No, I don't know where my this is my making. I need a mask. I have a mask. Oh, it's really nice. Does anybody need a mask? You need the super layer. And there's one that's my voice is my job. Oh, yes. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, probably. Um, I don't know where my darn phone is. But you know, I think it, it would be ideal to have everybody mixed at once because we gotta wait the 10 minutes and we want to put a timer on everyone. I'm gonna have, oh there it is. I'm gonna have to call my phone. <laughs> I brought a knife to, to mix or you can just use your spatulas. And you know, I suppose we don't have to worry about the timing so much as long as the last person's jug has been 10 minutes. As long as the last person slaves 10 minutes. Right, right. So yeah, maybe I will mix mine up. And then 
She's a politician. She's just telling you what you want to hear. She's the president. Yeah, I need a little bit more. Okay. Uh, friends. Yeah. It's going to be a little pooty like that. You know, what you can do is you can always hit it with a scissor there and then fold down both. But I found that that can help a little bit. But by the time you start spreading the thin set on, everything will kind of bush and mesh. When you, yeah. when you have it the right consistency, can you show it? Yeah, I'm all about peanut butter. I want my consistency of my thin set to be peanut buttery. Right. I don't read directions. I, again, I don't do, do it that way. I just go by feel. And always remember, after mixed, wait 10 minutes for it to slake. That is important stuff. I don't know why, but everyone says it's important. Right. Some will say five minutes, I think, but I just give it 10 and let it do its chemical magic. Does anybody want a knife to stir? Yeah, it's too thin in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks good. Some people will tell you thinner is better for a ball so it gets into all the mesh, but then it's sloppier to deal with. So to, to me, you just got to find that happy medium for you. Yeah, we, we should still have about eight minutes to let that. Yeah, you now you're now you're good. Yep. Oh yeah! Oh god. Oh god. Anybody need a spatula? I got it. I got it. All right. Yeah, you should wait ten minutes before you start. Oh, I use that one for spread. Yeah, I got extra spatulas if anybody needs. Yeah. Here's one. Well, I got I got like five more. I have one back in my truck and I'm taking a glass water. We have one more if you want to do that. Does anybody need a spatula? Yes. Oh, I'll see. 
But he wants them back. Yeah. Ideally, yeah. Uh, <laughs> then once your thin set's mixed, you really don't need the mask anymore. That's up to you at, at your comfort level. Once I'm mixed, I get rid of it. Yeah. That's more of those read the rules things that I don't excel on. Yeah, it's in a book, right? That's right. Yeah, it's fine. No, uh, no, I <laughs> said, uh, as long as it's right here, it's right here. 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 It's You know, for this application where you're not gluing, it probably doesn't need to be slated because it can slate right on there. I just don't know how that works exactly. But you know, I just follow the rules. Just follow the rules. Right. A few of the rules, I think. You know, the, the chemical, the, the the science side. I think you have to follow pretty. Pretty faithfully. Well, one of the reasons why you do is that we don't have to stay in the box. Right, right. <laughs> but, but there are still you know, rules. science rules that you have to follow. Yeah. But that's part of art is you know, seemingly defying those rules. And, and I'm not understanding. Right. Yeah, mine are like five minutes. Oh, all right. So I think for the, and, uh, I think for the sake of expediency and time today, let's just start jumping in with it. Everybody seems to be ready. So this part's pretty simple. You know, you keep your ball up on your thing. I just start at the top. I start slathering it. What I usually do is my join point. I usually will put up top and I'll work towards that to kind of cinch in some of those pooches and open bits oh, and, and then when you get about half of it done then you'll flip it and do the same pooches, is that a technical that's, that is technical yes okay. I think that's, that's, that'll be in the glossary not the kind of pooch that barks you know, don't, don't get it mixed up <laughs> And then you just kind of want to press it in there pretty good as you wipe it in there. You want it to get in between the mesh, under, in it, and, you know, really, yeah, you want it to become one eventually. You want to become one with it. That's right. Wipe on, wipe off. <laughs> You don't want to see, you're going to see it through texture, but you don't want to see the bare mesh, correct? But you don't want to slather on so much thin set that you don't see the mesh at all. Because that'll probably take a little while, too long to dry. 
And then I do have little uh, sandwich bags sort of mixed with some thin sets so you can do another layer at home where you can start putting tessera on. So if you want to grab a little bit of thin set before you go, let me know. You know, that would probably require an engineer to, to faithfully tell you that. Okay. With something like this where you've got the styrofoam ball is going to be under there forever. It's not going to go away. I, I would do one or two layers this size. Okay. Okay. But I, I did a, a big one on a beach ball and I ended up with like nine layers of things because I didn't know when to stop. I just kept covering. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not comfortable. I better just put another one on. So now the thing weighs about 80 pounds. It is a nightmare. <laughs> but it, nobody's going to break it. It won't blow over. So, you know, with, with mesh and all that, I, I really don't know how you would know exactly how many layers. I think it's just guesswork and what you're comfortable with. What do you think if, if it lost air, it'd be fine? Yeah, it is working. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the beach ball is no longer in that. I, I popped the beach ball and pulled it out because it, it, it would have got loose and rattled in there. And I'm just anal enough for that to annoy me. So I, re I removed it. But with, with eight layers of mesh and thin set, I doubt it would cave in. So, Brent, do you put a resin on your uh, tents? I no. Um, so I just did a, a house number for my house. And normally I would grout and I, I put a sealer in it. Yeah. It's like a 511 impregnator sealer stuff. It's not an after the fact. It's an in the grout. You mix it. And I, again, I don't know if that was the right thing or not, but I've used it for a few years with good luck. But lately I kind of stole an idea from Annette Coleman. I just grouted with thin set on my latest house number. And it was so easy because sometimes my thin set is like right up to the top of the tessera. And I think, well, my grout's not going to have any room to bite. I didn't have to worry about because the, the thin set's going to mesh with that thin set underneath it and bond with it much better, I think, than grout would too thin set because grout's not an adhesive. Right. So you don't worry about putting resin on it. No, I don't like resin myself. It's just not a, 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 an effect I like. I really like the shiny brightness of, of the glass generally. So you could, that, that would be much more protective. You know, th this is how to make a ball, how to actually make it last in, in freezing, thawing temperatures as a different class. <laughs> and I don't teach that one. I'm not qualified for that one. So you know, I've got a couple gazing balls I've got out in my garden. The one gazing ball, the, the grout did crack in a couple little areas. So I just super glued it and flipped it upside down. <laughs> um, well, I did a I did a grout and then sealing on the outside. Right. Just on the grout. And it's been out for two winters and no problem. Okay. Because I've got I've got some cinder blocks that I, I just thin set it up, pressed glass on and grouted them. And they've been outside for over 10 years. It, with soil in them, you know, there's moisture happening in the things. And, and that's held together. So I've always felt like it, 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 it'll do a pretty good job. But if you leave it outside in the snow and it freezes and thaws and a little water manages to get in there, then you're going to be in trouble. The other thing that uh, you can do is mix the thin set with the sealer and not water. Which is right, good. right. That's how I was doing with that grout sealer that I use in the grout. Right. Oh, okay. oh, that's a good so yeah, it was just, it was so the sealer water. stuff instead of water. That just, yeah. that yeah. stuff made it a little thicker. It makes it a, a little rubbery, weird yeah. texture. I don't mind it per se, but it's just different to work with. But, you know, they have a grout for the next that I used that for swimming. Uh-huh. Did it work good? Was it a poxy grout? No. And so, and I think, I think the mixture I'm adding in essentially makes it epoxy grout. I think that's essentially what I was doing without really knowing it. I just went to Home Depot. I looked at bottles and said, 
stone sealer, so I went with it. Most people will tell you sealing happens after grouting and everything. Yeah. Teacher, uh, I'm done. <gasps> oh, I'm done. I, I would fine tune it, make it a little smoother, just. Uh, <laughs> And then you did the bottom, you flipped it once. So, you know, by nature, the the yogurt container is going to put a little ring in your ball. That's going to disappear once you start slathering on thin set and tessera. So you can go in and fine tune that and get real anal about it. But I found that it just disappears in process. Now, with the extra, what I would do is just let it dry in there. I'll probably just take them all home. I'll let them dry and hopefully kind of break them apart and reuse them. But as they're wet and kind of get stacked on each other, it'll be an adventure. But I just, you know, I don't want any, any of it going anywhere near their drains or anything like that. Everyone knows no thin set near any drains, correct? Or grout, any of that stuff. Right, right, right. <laughs> I think with a ball this size, I wouldn't bother on this size with the styrofoam underneath. I wouldn't do another layer of mesh, but you could. I, I believe with a, another layer of thin set and then mosaicing it, that would be plenty strong at this size. So another layer of thin set. I would just to be safe because I have thin set around. If you don't have it around, you could probably get away without it, especially if it was going to live inside. It could live inside as is. But yeah, that's, I, I like my stuff outside. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, you just kind of want it to set up for the next, you know, little bit, hopefully harden just a little bit. Um, I think a slower cure is probably more ideal. Those are those are specifics I I I'd have to guess at, but that's my instinct. And then I always just take a heavy duty wood or wood file to it if you want to touch up the surface when it dries. And I've even seen people make tessera out of thin set. I couldn't find the video again, but she just uses her excess thin set, spreads it out, and then clips it up and uses it as tessera. I think it was Rachel Sager, but I just could never find the video again. <laughs> I haven't I haven't ever taken one there I've been tempted by a few of them but I kind of flit around with so many things I have trouble committing and I really want to take one particular class coming in October so no it's actually just an individual guy his name's Kala Jarda he does super realistic mosaics. And it's kind of what I've been envisioning for a few years. Um, I do rougher versions of it, but he's going to extremely fine small pieces. And the bear he has, it, 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 it couldn't possibly look more like a photo. It's absurd. And I think I just saw that. Okay. I think some people, Kala Jarda, and then Diane, Diane Shikahu. It kind of posts a lot of his stuff as well. It's DNH fine mosaics, I think they're calling themselves now. But I, I think they're out of Australia. But I really like his stuff. The DNH, I see a lot of it being posted on uh, Mosaic Mentory. Yeah, I absolutely love that guy's work. I want to take his class in October. Is he coming to town? Or you no, just online. He's kind of doing a pretty in-depth online thing. People have said he, that he's super helpful and. 
I, I don't love the idea of it, but in-person classes that I really absolutely want aren't coming to town. So by the time I fly somewhere, stay there, try to deal with their studio, I think I'm just going to give it a try. Yeah, I think you're right. And with the cost of airfare anymore. Right. And then I can't just crash anywhere. A lot of studios wouldn't be great for me because they're you know built to stand up and work at. So I do like my mosaic work. I'm mostly stained glass. So I started with stained glass, mostly animals. I mean, you do glass, you use glass as you test. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So that's I my answer. But, but you kind of see the tiger there. Um, so that's one of the pieces I did. But but so I'm looking to take that to much smaller pieces. Like this, I didn't actually growl, but when I growl them, it, it tends to splotch it. You know, it's very hard lines I'm creating there. So I'm looking to reduce that. And that's why I'm really interested in this new translucent growl. But the idea of getting stuff so small and so tight that I don't even need growl, that really thrills me even more. I don't like grouting. I've gotten much better at it over time, but I really don't like it at all. Some people love the finality of it and stuff, but I, I hate it. And I, I, I pour over, what color grout? Is this going to be the right contrast to this? How many grout colors do I need? I've, I've done a few pets. I've done a few pet commissions, but I don't really like, I, I only do like four or five mosaics a year. Because I'm, I don't have that much time. They take me a long time. Um, so I really prefer to just make my own mosaics. And if somebody wanted to buy them, cool. Because I put a ton of pressure on myself to do someone's dog. And I'm not doing a animal. I'm doing a, an animal they knew intimately, you know, for a decade probably. And then probably died. Generally, yes. So you really have to do this thing of, of proper service in, in that sense. So I, I've done them, but I don't like it. But every once in a while, I'm like, yeah, I'll take a couple hundred dollars. And, you know, it can't hurt to replenish my supplies. But the reality is they take me so long, I'm getting paid two or three dollars an hour. Oh, kids want to play. Do you know the neighborhood kids there? Right. Right. Yeah, they want in on craft day. Okay. How are we doing here? Any questions? Everybody looks like they're just go the hand method, huh? No spatula? That seems to work. I don't want to get out there. Uh, uh, like, you gloves are hardly any dirtier than mine. Come on. She got the COVID well, ball there. You know, she wants this spiky. This is a little great. Can you take this on and clean it off? <laughs> so that's pretty much the process there. Again, you know, multiple layers are your options from here on out. And again, you can make them out of trash, styrofoam. You can start with anything. I've, used, I've seen yoga balls used. I've used beach balls and four square balls. Um, you know, you can glue two half, half styrofoams together for bigger balls. But then I save every piece of styrofoam I get in the mail. If I get a big box with styrofoam, it's in the top of my shed right now. It'll probably get thrown out when I move, but I've got it. It's possible. Did you ever see that styrofoam that Lori had? I did. I was tempted, but I had to. I had to say no. But I was very tempted. I I did take some, and I can't remember. Yeah, I told you. But you have to use a you know saw. Yeah. Right. But I, I'm kind of on Craigslist every other day or so looking at foam and styrofoam, see what might be for sale. 
There's even some shape stuff up in Wyoming, like big King Tut head. They're, they want a lot of money for it, but you know, you just never know what you'll find on there. And then you find someone that's real motivated and just wants to find a home for something. The rest of how you're putting the test, how do you put the test array? Okay. Do you want me to do a little tutorial on that? You want to kind of come in while these? You guys, he's trying to talk. <laughs> if they don't want to listen, that's their problem. It's like like So friends can show us an example. Okay. Okay. So he wants to. He, he just said if you'd like to come up and watch what he does with Tesseray while you're dry. Oh, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. All right. Um, so kind of first so this is kind of uh, what i like to do when i'm applying tesra sometimes i do this sometimes i'll just slather on and start going but i want to teach you the the, the ziploc baggy method to, to kind of dispense it from there so you fold your you know fold your top out so you're not mucking up the top as you dip your thin set in. I'm not going to throw a ton in here, but I'll reuse what I have. So then just kind of get that into the corner there. <laughs> when they die in my kitchen, they go to my work room. No longer than it will in a Okay, like four hours or so. Yeah, thin set. A lot of people think, well, you just keep adding water to thin set. It'll no, it's gonna get hard in about three to four hours. And you keep adding water to it, you're gonna keep adding trouble to it, yeah. in my opinion. You mix it once and you go, and if you need more, you mix up more for yeah. sure. Um so because yeah, I used to think because I I've read online, oh, this is the way I throw sort my thin set. I don't know what you're doing or adding to it, but <laughs> you know they, they say they put it in a waterproof or an airtight thing for a day or so. So, so now I've unfolded that and and sealed it up. So then I, I didn't actually. Oh, I do have my my painter's tape. So then I'm going to twist that this end together, and then you should actually tape around there. It seems like a wasteful step. But once you start squeezing on this thing, it's going to manage to we weasel its way back out that other end. I don't know how it does it, but it does. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now, just for the quick tutorial here. So then you, you snip off the little corner. You're basically creating a cookie decorating bag yeah. with thin set in it. So then what I would do, well, I would take my ball. I've got my test right here. It's just... I don't know, I think it's granite or something that I got from Kathy Faden. So I busted them in half and I'm just going to expose the middle, the middle part there. So I'll double this well here. So then what I'll do is I just take my bag and I will just put a line there. Let me get my palette knife. Is that the same consistency as peanut butter? Pretty much. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I kind of use the same consistency for whatever I'm doing. Oh. So I kind of squirted that on. If you get a good squirt, you might not need to use your palette knife, but I just kind of, you know, fine tune it there into my line. Set that on top. Okay. Normally I would have tweezers and I would just apply, but you know, so then I'm just going to drop that on there. It just needs to bed into that thin set. You, you know, how how deep to bury it? That's the same as how many layers to put on your ball. It's a mystery until they start falling off. It, yeah. You're doing it good, <laughs> right? So, because we did, uh, I did Del Baldo's workshop there, and you know, we were bedding things into thin set. Most of my stuff held, but a couple weeks later, a couple things did just kind of pop out because I didn't bed them real deep. But, you know, the deeper you bet it, then that's going to give you more visual that you see. So whether you want your thin set hidden or visual, you know, you can kind of determine that. So 
So then what I'm gonna what I'm gonna create is kind of a swirl on this. So I'm just starting in the middle, and then I would you know kind of swirl to the middle there. So what I'm just gonna do is keep going in that line. And you know, th this thin set isn't super deep. It's just, you know, I, I can see it squish around the sides a little bit. Um, if I wanted it to be just a little deeper, I could always, you know, push it up against the sides there a little bit. That's the beautiful thing about thin set. It's so malleable and movable for the next hour or two. Whereas if you glue a thing onto a piece of wood with weld bond, that can happen fast. So, um, the, the thin set's just a lot more flexible. Sets up sets. Yeah, I, I find that it does, especially if you add any of those sealants into it. Yeah. Um, so there I kind of hit a, a high point on my ball there. So I'm just gonna square a little bit more into there just to make sure I've got it deep enough. You know, and you can always use your, your tessera to kind of let me scrape that over and kind of bring it over. So again, you know, that's all going to stay buried towards the bottom. By the time I put another row in along there, you're not going to see much of that thin set in there. You know, I could go very globby and make it more of an effect, but that's not what I want here. So then I would just kind of keep going around and, you know, at a certain point I'm going to have to do this to keep going around, but um, so that I can just keep slathering on and just keep attaching. Do you do like, like half and then half? I don't, I don't worry about putting it on both sides. If that's what you're asking me, right? Put some on here, put some on here. No, are you worried about it slipping down or anything? So like you do the top half of your design and then let it dry and you flip the ball over to do the- Kinda, right. yeah, yeah. So um, I'm not so worried about this really sliding down per se but I can't have it touching the cup. It, it has to stay clear of the cup till everything hardens and sets. But that's why I like the thinner, thin, the thicker thin set so it won't slide down. When I've worked with weld bond on a surface like that, I wanted to bang my head against the wall. It was, it was horrible. So uh, that, that thin set is much more forgiving that way. I did see on YouTube that if you put wax paper between the ball and this, you can, it doesn't come up with such a hard crease. Oh, oh okay. So like when you flip it, if it wasn't quite dry, you could still flip it because the, it creates some, some sort of a Just, bit of a cushion. It's right, it out. disperses so the weight not, or yeah. something. Yeah, so that works. So, so this, this is what I would do. And then, you know, when once I get to a point, where at a certain point, I'd be like, well, I kind of have to <laughs> physically just stop because I can't go in another direction or something. Then you just let it dry and you come back tomorrow or you have another project working next to you. But you know, that that's just, it's so simple. And like, I don't like this piece there. That's the beautiful thing. I can take it out, replace that real simple. Cause I one had kind of a high side and it felt funny. So again, Vincent allows you to change stuff out. When I first started, I just glued stuff on wood and went. And then if, you know, if I hated something at the end, that was life. But then I just covered contact paper and mesh and work on those or, or thin sets. So now I, everything I do is imminently changeable. You could use a hair dryer and it will. Right. I've heard that, but it, it, I've, I've done it. Okay. I've done it. That's always made me nervous, but, but so it, it, it isn't as dire as I used to think, but it's still, it, it adds a lot, a lot, a lot of trouble there. You're like, I, I did a dog once, I grouted it, and the eyes looked horrible. Mm -hmm. they, they were just wrong. And so I cried, I literally cried, and then got myself together, and I chipped it out of there, re-glued it, and grouted it properly. And that was a heck of a process. If that had just been, but, you know, the reality is, by the time I grouted it, no matter what process I did, I was committed to, on that one. So, you know, good planning sometimes doesn't even get you there, but right, it is always good to know. Because back when I first started, there wasn't so many Facebook forums. I didn't even know where to find that information. Now I do know that. But back then, that, that, I would have had no clue even where to find that information without paying someone. So that, that we're really lucky with those Facebook 
yeah. groups each year. I, I, I probably am on at least 10 of those. And, mm-hmm. you know, I kind of scroll through a lot, but every once in a while I'm like, wow, there's an idea. You know, someone just really sat in with me. So th- I think those things are good to just surround your life with. And, and, and it bleeds into your brain. Both of us works in funny ways, I think. So it always happens four in the morning. It, it's unfortunate, but that's. I got an idea. I'll take brilliance whenever I can get it, though, Marley. It's so rare anymore. I doubt that. I wish you were correct. So once you put all the tesserae on, man, you don't do anything. Not with this, then it's done. I don't play with rocks mostly. I'm mostly a stained glass person. So stained glass, it it, it would be the same process, except you got to go so much thinner with your stained glass because you don't want it squeezing so much up on the top. So I spend half of my time scraping the top of my stained glass when I'm doing it because it's hard to find that perfect amount so they're just bedding in but not squeezing around then i put one next to it's like oh uh, you know that best laid plans now that one squeezed some over so but but that's again you know i have little dental picks and toothpicks and i'm constantly running my line right and sometimes i think my lord somebody must be doing this so much more efficiently uh, this is futile i i'm absurd and then i'll watch videos online like nope that's exactly how I did it. Mosaics are futility on some level. The time you put in, it's hard to really, you know, value hours wise. But every second I spend in my room, I find worth it. So I don't care if somebody wants to buy my stuff or not. It's my sanity. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Then it's a little ego boost if somebody wants to buy it. But I've already got my sanity. And so you know, I'm already halfway there to happiness. <laughs> So does anybody have any questions or want to come put some tessera on here? So you, you'll, you'll see it's, it's a little thin right there. Marble or floppy? That's kind of the effect I'm going for, you know, that's where they break up small tea and use the rough sides. But I don't, you know, the polished side's beautiful, but not for a mosaic. That bores the hell out of me, quite honestly. So I like this rough side. Whether this will live outside? See, that's the weird thing about rocks, is a lot of them can't really live outside once you break them in certain ways. Like, I've, I've gone up to Fort Collins. There's an alabaster mine near Fort Collins. So I went to where you kind of buy the alabaster and he cuts it with this crazy saw. And I'm like, well, you know, can I do a sculpture out of that and put it outside? No, no, it won't stand up. I'm like, it came out of the ground. So my brain doesn't quite understand that. But certain rocks, like, like travertine, is very porous. Travertine probably doesn't live where there's snow and thaw and freezing cycles so it can live with that porous here water would get into it and explode it so i'm not sure what's gonna happen i'm gonna do a, a, a mosaic with travertine soon but it'll just have to be an indoor piece this i'm putting it outside because some of my stuff it's an experiment i'm gonna make this throw it outside and if it's standing in two years i'll sell one to somebody or make one for somebody but you know i've sold a few like pieces on flagstone i don't know if the last two or three years or not I sure hope so, but so sometimes I'm I'm willing to release something early like that, but sometimes I'm like, well, I just want to play. So one note I will give you when, if you're using stained glass with balls, smaller pieces are your friend. You will have pieces sticking out. It will be very sharp. And, and you know, so following that curve and using smaller pieces, but of course, smaller pieces are a lot more work. So you find that that point that works for you and that your sanity can deal with. What materials do you usually use for your work? I I made the glass and I will see the glass. Although the one I used finished is hanging. Well, I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I